saw this article earlier, Christy. You saw it too. And, and, and you know, we both said, let's have a conversation about yeah. this because yeah. you're married, I'm single. So we can we can really have a real good conversation with this because I, I have some questions to a married person that have my own perspective. This kind of rubbed me wrong. And I was like, what? What? Yeah. What in the world? Yeah. Uh, but this article was on CNBC. This article has the nerve to say, <laughs> has the nerve people to say. It's absolutely critical to have a separate bank account when you are married. Even when you're married, don't rely on a joint bank account, says best-selling author of Smart Women Finish Rich and co-founder of A&E Wealth Management, David Botch. What? You should have your own account, both of you, he tells CNBC. Make it, uh, make it, make it adding. It's absolutely critical, especially for women that you keep money in an account that's yours and that you control. After all, nearly half of marriages end. <laughs> wow. He says, and it's almost uh, always a woman that is hurt the most financially in divorce. So I want you to have your own investment account. I want you to have your own emergency account. I want you to have your own credit cards and your, and your own credit score. What in the world? Then you can also maintain a joint account. Or what he calls the we account in which you can together stash money to pay for your rent, utilities, bills, all that type of stuff. But he's pretty much saying in this ridiculous article that if you are married, if you come together as one, stay divided when it comes to your finances. Yeah, you know what was interesting about that last thing that you just said? Uh, we could, we, You could also maintain a joint account like an afterthought. Your joint account is the afterthought or what we call a we account. You know what I hear in that? And this is this is what bugs me about the whole thing, Anthony. It's not even really about the accounts, honestly. It's not even about the money or, or it, that part is a, is a byproduct of it. It's the premise of the whole perspective that sometimes we're a team and sometimes we're not. Yes. We're going to sometimes act like a team in this area of our life, but we're going to sometimes not. And you know what? It, as a believer, as a, just in general, as someone that values marriage and what that means to make a commitment to someone, when you take vows, when you walk down the aisle, you're making a commitment to that person to be a team. Now, do half of marriages end in divorce? Yeah, that's really unfortunate, but it doesn't mean that while you're married, you shouldn't act like a team when you can, while you can yeah. to be a team. You know, I, I used this example with you and I wanna know your thoughts on this. So my husband, um, you know, we're, we, we're big sports people. He yep. loves basketball. I love football. We love watching sports, you know, back when we used to <laughs> have sports. <laughs> but he would say sometimes you'd see a pattern with football players. This may happen in basketball too, but especially football players where when they would get – that they play really hard the year that their contract is up, you yep. know, because they want to get a really good deal, get a really good contract. And then after they sign this big deal, they get comfortable. Yeah, they kind of take their foot off the gas. They kind of don't play as hard. And you know what you see is you see the whole team suffer – because this person had their own agenda. This person was trying to do their own thing. And I think, you know, you asked me as a married person, I'll tell you, Matt and I have been married eight years and we've had three kids in that time. And you go through some really difficult th things you could have never imagined. It's not just uh, a good idea to be a team. It's essential yes. to be a team. And I think this is just, that's what bugs me is because this acts like being a team is optional. And I don't think it is. Yeah. Here's my problem. as a single person. It doesn't make me want to get married. If, <laughs> yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah. If everything is still about I and and the only thing that is we is when it's time to pay bills. But you go make your money. You do what you want to do with your money. I make my money. I do what I want to do with my money. And then we just all with our money, separate money. We just put a little bit in the pot to pay bills so we can live. But I'm over here spending money over here. You're over here doing what you want to do. Where where is the we? And I think the problem that I have with this article is that it's out there. That they are saying 50% of the people who get married are divorced. Well, my prayer is that I'm on the opposite side. And so I'm going to go in thinking that we're not going to get divorced. That's right. I'm going to go in there thinking that we are going to build wealth 
not just we pay bills. Yeah, and it's, it makes me think of that example. I may quote this wrong, but uh, Dave has used this example at Entree Leadership events so that the Clydesdale horses, you know, they're, they're working horses that can pull an unbelievable amount of weight. I want to say, if I'm going by memory here, that one Clydesdale can pull around 12,000 pounds. Mm. So you would think that when you put two together that they would pull 24,000, but they right. can't. They pull 48,000 yes. when you put them together. I, I had a friend, uh, this was years ago, but she came to me kind of for money advice, knowing that I worked at this company and, and had these resources. She said, you know, here's my situation. What advice do you have? And her and her husband had separate accounts. She had a bunch of debt and he had a bunch of savings. And I was like, well, we can fix this, you know. <laughs> you know? I said, I'm just going to connect these two dots for you and tell you, if you combine your money and actually be a team, as a team, you can make so much more progress. You can pull 48,000 pounds as the analogy. I just think um, it, it it's not just a, a marital principle. It's a financial principle. Yeah, yeah. Whenever two or three come together. So it's like in, our, in this perspective, there's two physical and there's God, there's Jesus right there. And it's like I believe we could do a lot more together. And I just believe that with my personal walk in faith and your personal walk with faith, that that 50 percent of marriages can go down. We yeah. know the number one cause for right. uh, divorces is money. Right. And so that's our mission is to help people out with their money. So this 50 percent of divorce rates can go down. Right. And we're seeing more people uh, married and, and having a fruitful and prosperous life. And, and I agree that we're going to have as a married person, there's going to be some tough seasons. Uh, but we shouldn't walk into it saying it's going to be tough. And more than likely, we're going to get a divorce. You know, and you know, so interesting. You just pointed something out. So, as a company, Ramsey Solutions, we, you know, Dave started this 30 years ago. We've been doing this. We've seen millions and millions and millions of families become debt free. Yes. Millions and millions of people change their future. We've seen marriages saved. It's incredible. And you know what? Our advice is not, hey, the the secret to a successful marriage is to have your separate thing going no. on. To have no, it's actually the opposite. It's to put it together yes. and be a team, and it brings a different sense of unity to your marriage and to your finances. It's so so important to be a team. Yes, man. Listen to us, married people in the world, and even single people. Uh, it's better to be together than to stand divided. You can accomplish a lot more together. Do not listen to this foolishness. Don't even read the book smart woman finish rich no read a total money makeover get the business boutique book and we'll help you